welcome back to What Are Tea Noobs with General Disturbance. This is the Hummel, the tier 6 German SPG. This one's located on the westbourne of Sand River Encounter, and it's under the command of Talon 1958 of Olymp, and he's in the competition with Angelina 75 to win the Weekend Lion. Game in, game on. Well, as you may know, if you uh, if you do, Angelina has actually sent in a replay for this weekend already, and she managed to get a second-class tanker, a bruiser, and a confederate. So she started off fairly well, and now she's whoa. We're watching an AMD and the enemy team being a quite um, well daring actually to pop up there so quickly. Trying to get all the spotting in as much as he can do. Now, as you know, the Weekend Lion competition is all about uh, who gets up to look after their little boy, Remy. And basically, it's uh, to try and get the best replay you can. Good shot. First hit. 208 hit points of damage on the A46. He got tracked and allowed Talon to get an easy shot on him. He'll probably fix the tracks. Yep, he does. Manages to get away, but that T-37, well, he's stuck around, and we are now reloaded. Rounds out. Just a, a little bit wrong with the lead there. Now, as it's an encounter game, somebody's gone towards the cap area. It is a Tier 6 game with Tier 6 tanks only. And, oh, look, we've got a nice little target, a VK-301P. Not particularly fast, fairly easy to hit. He's still got 21 hit points of splash off that one, even if he didn't get a direct hit on it. Okay, T-37 goes down because he was just a little too incautious and he was stationary, which made him an easy shot. Meanwhile, that Cromwell is disappearing as fast as he can. And the AMD, well, he's still jumping dunes. Well, because that's a fun thing to do. It's one of the reasons why I love this map, actually. The fact that you can actually jump dunes. I guess that must be a, a throwback to um, some of the films I watched when I was younger. Where we saw dune buggies jumping all over the sand. And one in particular, I think if I remember correctly, was the Thomas Crown Affair. Where they actually had um, a proper dune buggy jumping all over the dunes with Steve McQueen and, of course, uh, Faye, Ru uh, Faye Dunaway, or Faye Dingaway, as some people called her rather uncharitably, um, in the vehicle. Okay, so Type 64 there. He could have gone for that, but he instead changed his mind. Okay, we've got a whole bunch of enemy tanks right up here. And this is a good spot to dial in on. When they get close together like this, makes it easier for you to get hits. And that was a good one. Right into the side of the Junu. Junu armed with an 88mm main gun. Which I found out about the other day. Because, of course, I was looking at the stats. Makes it quite deadly. Because it's got about the same alpha as a 90mm. Another good shot. The KV-1S. Exposed his side, Talon dialed it in on that side and then made a hit. Now, the Type 58, the T-3485 made by China. But he's obviously changing his position now because he knows that uh, he, he wants to push this one. Now, the KV-1S made a bit of a mistake there. And, yep, that one actually landed just in front of him. But you can see a number of enemy tanks are now advancing on our BK-2801105, who's probably going to die very shortly, and he does. And this puts Talon in a bit of a sticky situation because he's actually fairly close to the enemy. In fact, there's a whole bunch of enemy tanks. Whoa, went into the rock there, wasn't expecting that. There's a whole bunch of enemy tanks just uh, further along the riverbed. And from this position, it's fairly difficult to get shots on the enemy unless you can see them. Okay, our 5916 is making a move in. Let's see if we can get a shot into the area. Our guys are also going in to try and get a, uh, a spot. And they found the enemy and they blocked his capping. Two enemy tanks. They've got to kill these guys first. 
Dialing in. Let it settle. And he fires the round in. Oh, he did get some damage. He actually damaged the Cromwell and got stun assist off him as well. But the enemy is starting to come down from the north. In fact, they got fairly close. There's a KV-1S and a 40TP nearby and he doesn't want to get spotted by those guys because that could be rather nasty for him. He doesn't have the armor to stand off against them. The 40 TP again, it's a difficult shot because he's firing up over the ridge line there, over the riverbed, I should say. And this guy's the other side of it. So the shell trajectory is, was going up and coming down the other side, but they're very, very close to uh, hitting the edge. KV-1S, let it back up. That's it. Now, now, rounds out. Good direct hit right up his rear. Yep, he got it right. Something, of course, I learned just recently is that a lot of new RT players are joining What RT Noobs and sending replays in. And one of the reasons they are doing it is because they're learning so much from watching replays of the other members. And so, uh, congratulations, guys. You're actually giving birth to the new RT players in the game. Oh, that Jackson so close. He didn't realize that the Jackson was actually behind him. Now we're trying to get a shot on the strip. He's trying to dial in, aiming ahead. That's right. Rounds out. Close. I think he tracked the guy. Yes, I think he did. The Jackson, though, is only a short distance away. Don't get too close to him. It's your proximity spot you, and then you're in a whole world of trouble. Okay, he's trying to actually get a shot on that Jackson, on the 40 TP rubber. We've only got the 59-16 in the cap. There's only four left on the team. And well, he's trying to defend against those guys. He can't go into the cap because if he does get spotted, he'll get easily killed. No armor. Up, oh, found that steer, uh, Strib 74 again. And he's stationary and he goes down. That's good. So now the scores are even. Now, we can't get a shot on the 40 TP just yet. Not with the Jackson behind us as well. And that rock face is just way too close. But if he backs up too much and gets seen by the Jackson, he's going to be in even more trouble. So ideally, only as much as you need to get over the ridge line. Oh, there's the Jackson. He did spot him. And he's taken a hit. That's a 90 millimeter round. Now the 40 TP is coming in because he knows... And we can't get the gun down. Yes, I think I illustrated exactly what I was trying to say. Don't get seen by the Jackson. Unfortunately, the 40 TP came in as soon as the Jackson saw him. And the Jackson managed to get a 90 round, 90 millimeter round in. And he said, oh, well, I can only wreck so many. Yeah, I think the thing is, if you do find yourself in the cauldron, so to speak, if you're actually caught between the Devil and Deep Blue Sea, if there's a, an enemy tank very, very close to you, and they might spot you if you back up, you're probably better staying underneath that overhang of the cliff edge and then getting ready for any enemy that might approach you from the other direction. So it didn't work on this occasion. And the enemy's now got two in the cap, and we've only got two tanks left. The AMD's going in first. I'm not so sure this Thunderbolt knows what he's doing, actually. He's doing the wrong thing. He should be headed straight to the enemy cap. Or to the, to the cap, not the enemy cap, because, of course, it's a single cap for both teams. And the AMD's gone down. The Jackson got him. And I now rather think that this Thunderbolt is deliberately hanging back because he doesn't want to get killed. And as a consequence, we are definitely going to lose the game. And I think the enemy, well, all three are in the cap now. And they have got an arty. He's probably in there as well. Might be in there. Only three cap pe uh, enemies will actually register in the cap at any one time. And yeah, this guy has no intention of going in and resetting the cap. So he's given up and effectively given the game away. Not very nice. 
I say what Talon should have done actually is driven out into the sand dunes be uh, the be beneath the gap. He should have gone down to the K row and shot into the cap from the K row. That would have been the best place for him to be. But I think he'd already gone past the Jackson and it was impossible for him to go down there. And that's it. Game's over. Here's the end of battle stats. And that was the third class tanker for Talon 1958 of Olymp in the Hummel. He managed to get a bruiser medal for getting at least five critical hits. In fact, he got five exactly. And he also got a Confederate medal for hitting more of the enemy than anyone else on his team. In fact, he didn't get a single kill, which means every tank that he hit contributed towards his Confederate. His win rate was fairly low, 750. But again, that's on the amount of damage, really. Uh, mostly the win rate is actually down to actual damage done rather than anything that uh, might be associated with a uh, stun assist or anything like that. Uh, so, yes, unfortunately... He did get taken out because he got caught. He got trapped. And there was no way out of that trap except by going into the cap area. And he might even have been spotted when he tried to go uh, into the cap area because the 40 TP probably did have a fairly good view on that cap area. Um, and so anybody trying to get to it was more than likely going to get killed. So um, Angelina's best score, second class bruiser and a confederate means she's still in the lead and we'll have to wait and see what happens in the next replay anyway uh let's have a look at the team scores well only 744 hit points the highest damage in the game went to the jackson the guy who actually put a round into talent talent he got 2405 second highest damage was the 40 tp with 1807 third highest damage was the vk 3002m on our team 140 uh, 1,442 hit points of damage. When it came to kills, the high score on was, in fact, the T21. It managed five kills. Four kills went to the Jackson. Two kills went to the VK2801105, who valiantly tried to pre prevent the enemy from coming down from the north. And also the Type 58 and the KV-1S and the other KV-1S on the enemy team, the one that survived. Uh, yes, so not good. And when it came to base XP, it's the Jackson again, 1,017 to him, 793 to the 40 TP, and then 758 to the type, uh, 758, 739 to the type 58 on the enemy team. And it was the 40 TP who actually did kill Talon in the end. I think under those circumstances, if they repeat it again with the 40 TP comes around the corner, uh, he needs you to back up against the edge of the cliff because that would lower the gun down or point the gun down. And then he possibly could have got enough gun depression to get a shot into the 40 TP before he died. But he would have died. There's no doubt about it. The 40 TP only need to get one shot in to make sure that uh, Talon was out the game. And all Talon could do was basically uh, get a bit of extra damage uh, to help his uh, score at the end. So there you go. Let's have a look at the detail. 11 shots fired, 4 direct hits, no penetrations, 11 splash. Damage of 744, of which 700 broke more than 300 meters. 2 hits received, both penetrations, and 1 from the uh, Jackson, the other 1 from the 40 TP. 7 enemy vehicles damage, no kills, but 99 hit points of damage assist, and 1,141 hit points of stun assist off 11 stuns. So that's not bad. That's probably why he got the third class. He earned 29,894 credits from a premium account and 870 base, uh, XP in the end from uh, the game. Um, he did get a courageous resistance because, of course, he did actually get a confederate out of the game. I hope you enjoyed that replay. If you did, please give this video a like. Do subscribe to our channel. Leave a little comment down below because it feeds the algorithm. And thank you for watching.